paying long distance fees to the Moonstar of Limbo. Here's your look at the brand new Super 7 Silverhawks Ultimates Wave 1 Monstar. Monstar is the head of the Limbo mob and functions as the local criminal kingpin. He's been around Limbo for over 300 years. He also has above normal strength, but when endowed within the light of Limbo's Moonstar, Monstar's body transforms and is entirely covered in or converted to robotic armor. His strength is now many times greater than it was in its normal state. He has jets on his elbows that he can use to fly through space or fire red energy blasts. His most dangerous ability is the star-like blasts that come from what is normally his eye patch. He has a personal vendetta against Stargazer and all those who align themselves with the Silverhawks. Well, 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 look who's been lurking in limbo. Before we get a closer look at the robotic monster who's now making up the first wave of Silverhawk Ultimate figures, let's go and grab the tape measure just to see how tall this big boy is. Going right to the very top of his tallest spike, Monstar in robotic state is about 10 and a half inches in height. No fooling. Or the figure is going to be about 26 and a half centimeters tall. Let us look at some size comparisons. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Why did I put so many question marks on a teleprompter there? Anyways, let's bring a couple of figures in right now. Here's what obviously Monstar looks like with his pre-transformed state before, of course, the rays of the moon star of Limbo rain down on him and transform him, of course, from this to this. In this case, the original Monstar, while being a still a big, big, pretty big figure, only goes to about what the bicep of the robotic one that we're looking at here from Wave 1. I figured it would also be a good thing to bring in for size comparisons, of course, because this guy's also pretty big. Here's what he looks like with another big baddie that isn't as big as now he may seem. Because, of course, the Mumra the Ever-Living, who would have been a large figure at the time that he first came out, is still only going to the top shoulder of Monstar. A couple of figures also we can bring in here as well. Here's what he looks like with Windhammer. I wanted to bring him, of course, because he's one of his cronies. And we just recently also had a look at the Wave 1 also released figure. Here's also what he looks like with the leader of the Silverhawks, Quicksilver. As it always is the case with these Super 7 releases, Monstar in his robotic body does come included with quite a lot of things. We're going to look at these all individually. Starting first, I suppose we could have a look at the figure comes included with some swappable hands. As of right now, just to full disclose that the figure does have closed fists attached to his forearms. Those will be doing away with shortly as the figure comes included with some pointing hands. And while it doesn't seem to be the case that they've painted these hands individually, it does look like they have molded them in a really nice, recognizable orange color that he has in the cartoon. Uh, we'll say, though, from while we're still talk, talking about the orange, though, I do wish that the figure did have a lot more orange on his arms, his legs. I'm saying this now in case I forget. You guys can all remind me. Please remind me. But the figure comes in clear with some pointing hands. I suppose they would also serve to help him holding as well the laser lance that he also comes in clear with as well. The laser lance, I know we're kind of beelining away from the hands for a second, but you can take the lance and they it just wedges in between. Well, so much doesn't wedge, but you wedge it in between the fingers and the thumb. And he holds the laser lance that way, as you can see right there. So it serves not only a twofold, essentially, pointing hands, but also a trigger firing hand for the included laser lance that the figure has as well. We're going to come back to that. Leave it with me. Leave it with me. I know I'm leaving you guys with a lot of stuff. There's a lot of responsibility in this review. I promise. I promise we're going to get through everything together. Anyways, let's move that to the side. I did already mention the fact the figure comes in clue with trigger firing hands or pointing hands. The figure also comes in clue with a couple of gestured hands, more of a relaxed pose. The figure also comes in clue with more mauling hands if he, say, wants to break his cell open. Saw that, of course, I think the first episode or so. Or so. He also comes in clue with a couple of gripping hands also. And again, all molded in, again, that very nice orange plastic. The hands themselves are pretty actually easy to remove. Simply just take the figure, hold on to the form, whatever you do. Don't let this guy free. You're just going to wiggle the hands and remove the post from its forearm socket. Do it on the one side. There we go. And then what's a good suitable hand? Let's go with the more gestured hands. We're just going to kind of wiggle those back and put them back in the holes. We'll do the exact same thing then on the other side. Just again, wiggle this off. Not that this is necessarily a tutorial for changing out hands. You guys know by now how to change out hands, but we're just going to quickly go through this. Okay, so there's the hands then on Monstar's forearms. 
I'm going to move those hands out of the way. I suppose while we were on the topic of it, we already had a look at this already. The figure comes in clue is Laser Lance. This is something, of course, once transformed and then say, for example, he's taking Sky Runner out for a ride. He carries this usually around. We've seen this lots of times in the episodes. It's molded here in a gray plastic. It's painted quite well, too. You can see, like, there's some orange accents that match sort of the color scheme that he has for his body. as some orange there on the back stock. Uh, but one thing about it, though, is the few times I've actually put the hand onto the handle, it either may have been the plastic underneath the painted gray, or it may have been plastic coming off from his hand. But either way, I've got a little bit of the orange left behind here on the handle. And I have to I have to believe that that's probably from the painted handle painted gray, at least coming off. So that's a bit of a shame. It does have, again, on the end, the star formation. There seems to also be a hole on the end of it where you would think for a second it would have some blast effect. He comes technically included. I'm sorry, I know, I know I'm kind of all over the place here. He comes included with a couple of elbow effects. Now, these with the laser effects that he has on his, on his elbows because he fires lasers and he also has the jet thrusters. These ones, I thought for a second, may have been able to attach onto the end of it, but you can see, like, the peg hole is way too large to accommodate the hole that's on the end of the star. I thought maybe, if, I, if anything, you could flip this around, but that's not the case either. So, while there may look to be a hole on the end of the lance, he doesn't actually have anything that attaches onto it, so it looks like he's actually firing it. And move that to the side. Okay, so we were, I guess we were also talking about the fact that the figure comes included with two types of effect pieces for his elbows. In the cartoon, he not only uses it as jet propulsion, so he has these jet propulsion, uh, like again, like exhaust flames that he comes out from his elbows. These are really nicely done because they've used the translucent clear plastic, and it looks to be that they've added a secondary piece of plastic. And while it doesn't have a transitional effect of the clear going to the yellow, I do like that they've actually used more than one color. These plug in the exact same way as then the laser effects. You're going to flip the figure around here located on the back of his forearms. You have these little elbow holes, of course. You can take either the thrusters, for example. Let's do it on both sides. We want to be consistent, of course. And then he has, of course, the means to propel himself in space. Or what you can also do as well is just remove those. And seeing as we did already talk about these, you can also take then the laser effects. And the figure does have then laser firing elbows. Now that I'm looking at my boring elbows, I really wish that they could do a lot more than what they're doing right now. Anyways, let's put those to the side. The figure also comes included with, I guess we'll start, we'll go, we'll go to his interchangeable head sculpt here in a second, but the figure also comes included with Sky Shadow, a throwback not only to the cartoon, but also the original toy line. I think Monstar also came included with Sky Shadow. There was also a larger Sky Shadow too, one that he was probably about the same size. It was, I think, a larger Tallyhawk and a larger Sky Shadow. But this is a smaller one. You can see it has more robotic of a face. I do like the little like little fangs that they painted here on the front. The eyes really nicely done done here in a yellow yellow paint, I suppose, then a plastic. And they have painted a little bit also there as well in the orangey in the middle area. And the claws on the ends are also painted in that same orange color. There is technically articulation also as well for Sky Shadow. So you can, there's a hinge joint on this side and this side also as well. And on both the sides of his body, you can actually take the wings and move them in and outward. There is also technically, would there still be talons if, even though this is a robotic kind of gargoyle, yeah, he has these little talon pieces. There really isn't a place necessarily on the, on the monster, I forgot his name for a second, the monster's body, for example, where you can really then attach it. I suppose you could attach it kind of right around the joint of his wrist. If you sort of leave this space as a gap, you can then take at least one of the talons and sort of just rest it on that little open gap. But it doesn't really sit as well on there as I would hope. It's more just a balancing act than anything else. Did I show you guys? There you go. You can kind of, yeah, have it carefully, carefully resting against. I guess you kind of want to have it a little bit further forward, but have it resting on his forearm like that. Before I drop that, let's put that also to the side. And then the figure of his last of his accessories comes also included with a swappable head sculpt. This head sculpt isn't really that much different from the one that we already get for the body as a stock head. You can see that the heads are exactly the same, except for the fact that this one does have pupils, of course, on both sides. This one does not. The idea, the reasoning why they actually made this more of a socket, is he also comes included with a starburst effect. The star effect is just basically like translucent orange plastic. You can see it's more thinner than the elbow attachments we looked at earlier. And that literally just slots. Ooh, that looks painful. Slots into the eye of Monstar. Now, when he does transform in his transfer, when he goes to that transformation stage, he then usually looks up to the balcony above him and he projects this star formation and then hits Skyrunner up in the balcony. And then that gives him this armored look. 
He also, I think, uses it also as a weapon in the cartoon as well. But the thing I'm always re more reminded of is this is the thing that transforms, or at least armors up, the equivalent of Battle Cat in the Silverhawks. And then he, from there, he just leaps then onto Skyrunner, and they're good to go. So there's that option also as well. Changing out the heads is actually pretty easy. Uh, the one thing you will want to be careful of, though, is just obviously the spikes that he has. The spikes, luckily, Super 7 were smart to make this softer plastic. But even still, you may want to just kind of get your hand around the spike. Hold on to a place that isn't spike-related and just pop that off and then replace it then with the swappable head sculpt. And while this may not be the way I'm going to be displaying the figure on the shelf, because I don't know how many times I'm going to be really displaying him with the star being projected out from his eyeball, there's that option also available as well. And again, just to kind of show you guys the exact same head. The mouth is the same, the eyes appear to be the same, and the spike placement also seems to be in the exact same spots. Let's go ahead and pop that back off. I think we've covered off everything now for his accessories. Pop that back into place. There we go. Now getting a close look at Monstar. There was one other thing I also did want to show you guys when it came to this figure. Probably a question. I'm trying to kind of cover off all the questions. I'm sure you guys are probably either written down in advance. Oh, I noticed all your cue cards are also all written down. But it's probably also something you guys are screaming at the screen about as well. Uh, just to move this figure over here for a second bring in the transformation chamber throne this was obviously something that we did look at separately here on this channel and ideally it really is more suitable for the pre-transformed version of monstar of course you could just take his legs bend his knees and of course you can fit sit the figure then on his chair I did a whole full review of that if you guys did want to check that out i'm sure one of the questions somebody is probably asking right now is can you take the robotic monstar and do the exact same thing on the chair. Well, let's go ahead. Let's take the figure off right now. I, I already know the answer, but does anybody want to take a guess? Okay, so here's the chair. Obviously, we already had a look at that. For all intents and purposes, you can bring his legs forward, although this is as far as his legs will really go. Anything past that point, you can tell, like it's telling you not to go any further. So it stops about there. And then, of course, you can bend the knees. I did notice this knee is a little looser than this knee here, but still fine. And then we're going to go ahead and take Monstar and sit him on the throne. What he unfortunately does, though, is if you put him on the chair, he sits okay, but he tends to slide a lot of it, a lot of times off the chair itself. And I think it's just for the fact that there's so much body on the back of his torso. Uh, it just, it doesn't sit as well. One of the things you can also do kind of as well is to bring his arms further down and sort of use his arms as the thing that helps to stabilize the figure. And again, like, it does an okay job, but you'll see a lot of times, let's just move that up a little bit further. You'll see a lot of times, most of the time, it looks like he's just relaxing on a Sunday afternoon in his recliner. He's finished, of course, cutting the grass on, on his planet. I guess there, would, there wouldn't be grass. But he's lounging down in his recliner. He's about to watch sports. He's going to probably fall asleep. So unfortunately, he just doesn't sit as well as perhaps his pre-transformed state. And of course, as you're putting the figure into the throne, he's only just going to slide off of it. I hope that answered everybody's question. Let's move those to the side. And now let's get a closer look at Monstar. Overall, I really like the look of this guy. There's a lot of plastic, a lot of beefy plastic that they put into this piece. All in all, it looks good. One thing I would certainly say, though, is the coloring. I do like the orange that they used here for the shoulders. And I also like that that same orange carried over down to his lower trunks. He has it in his hands. He has it nowhere else. Well, he kind of has it in the mid-torso area, but more in the cartoon, I think he kind of keeps more consistently this color. They decided to give him the colors of the red here for, I'm not even sure the reasons. They gave him burgundy here for the arms, they gave him burgundy here in the mid-torso, and they gave him a burgundy head. I feel like they probably should have just given him the color to this, or maybe various shades of this color, and kind of keep that. Because I think mostly in the cartoon, he's more an all-orange character, and he doesn't have really as much the reds that we get here in this release. Still, that being the case, he's a great looking figure, though. Head sculpt is just as good as it is in the cartoon. Overlooking, yeah, maybe the fact that it isn't as orange as I would have liked it. I, I am really overall happy with how this one turned out. I already mentioned the fact that all the spikes are soft or plastic. So if you are worried that any of these will potentially break, worry no more. That's not going to be the problem at all. Uh, one other thing also with this figure... If you ever see the cartoon, and I would recommend if you never get the chance to watch Silverhawks, give it a go. It's kind of basically Thundercats in space. But when he transforms from essentially like this guy to this guy, part of his final end, well, one of the last stages of his transformation, he usually says, I am Monstar. And then he kind of has his arms straight up. You can't do that with this figure, unfortunately, because they didn't mold it with the shoulders with any bit of articulation. You can move it, yeah, here, but as that's as far forward as you really can get it. And while you're also doing it, 
You may notice it as well that it starts to leave a gap where the shoulder pad would normally been attached to the torso. It starts to sort of separate it. I wish they had found a way to actually add an articulation point right here. So maybe instead of just adding a ball joint to here, adding a ball joint also to here. So you could essentially take the entire arm and rotate it up along with the shoulder pad as well. Because again, like this is as far forward as you can really bring the arm. Any further past that point, you start to separate the shoulder from the rest of his body. And you definitely don't want that. But overall, again, like a nice looking figure. He's maybe not as heavy as I was expecting him to be also as well. Like they did make a, a lot of good uses and a lot of, you know, again, like they put a lot of plastic into this piece, but he doesn't equal a very heavy looking figure either. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the articulation here for Robotic Monstar. We're going to, of course, look at the head sculpt once again. Head is once again on a ball joint, whether you decide to go this route or you decide to go this route, they work the exact same way. Head looks up only by that much. The head does look down, and you can also rock it back and forth as well. Shoulders, again, are limited in the sense that you can only really bring them out at about 90 degrees. Anything past that point, then you are potentially running the risk of breaking the shoulder because it looks like it's probably just attached by a little bit of glue here to the top. And I would imagine more rotating it than beyond this point may run the risk of actually ripping that right off of his torso. So I would say only leave it at about 90 degrees. The arms do come out, uh, I would say about almost 90 degrees. He does have a swivel at the bicep. He does have only a single hinge in the elbow. And this is as far as you can bend the elbow. Just chalk it more up to the design of the character from the cartoon. That like That's as much as you can actually get mileage-wise when it comes to his bending his elbow. Hands rotate, though, all the way around. You can also hinge them back and forth. His upper torso is on a ball joint, but it doesn't seem to hinge forward and back like normally a ball joint would be. Instead, you can only really rotate it back and forth this way. The figure also seems to have something in the way of a ball joint here, but I can't seem to move it on the figure. He has the lower part of his body being more slightly softer plastic. The legs do move forward, but they only move forward a little less, but like 45 degrees. You can also bring the legs out, giving you a, a split about that far. The figure has a rotation, a slight rotation at the top there. Mostly though, he has a single hinge in his knee. A little loose on this knee, not as bad though on this knee. That allows at least the lower leg to rotate back and forth. The figure does have an ankle pivot back and forth this way. You can also rock his ankle as well. And just in case you are curious, even though the figure doesn't come included with a display stand, yes, located on the bottom. Check out these peepers. He's got a hole and hole on either side of his heels. So if you did have a display stand, although I would imagine that'd be a pretty small display stand, at least a small hole, small peg, it would accommodate at least the underfooting of Monstar. And once again, we can bring in his pre-transformed. I keep saying pre-transformed. It's the Monstar essentially become be, before he becomes this guy right here. And I think when it comes to probably displaying this guy, seeing that that robotic Monstar doesn't really fit the throne all that well, I'm probably going to be displaying then this guy on the throne and then maybe having the robotic Monstar next to him. I can only hope that we are going to be getting some vehicles down the road like they've done with the, the Thundercats, of course, Thunder Tank. I would love to see them release a Skyrunner. It, I would imagine it'd be quite large considering how big Robotic Monstar is. But could you imagine a Skyrunner to go along with this figure? I would be willing to sacrifice the shelf space if ever they were to be able to release one. As I'm always trying to throw out the 411 to you guys. If you guys are interested to get Monstar for yourself and want some 411 on pricing, Monstar, at least in his armored version, is about $30 more than your regular Silverhawk Ultimate figures. So, like, for example, the pre-transformation Monstar would have been about $54, $54.99. Armored Monstar, many of the online sites that ha have this guy available as of right now, Monstar is $84.99. So it's literally just a difference of $30 in price. And I think for the amount of plastic and the size of what you get for the figure, I think it's worth the fact that the figure does have a $30 additional price added on top of what you would normally pay for Silverhawks figures. Again, I don't think $84 is all that bad, considering what the prices are going for now figures. The figure has, I think, justified enough things to come included with them. Different effects, different interchangeable heads. I happen to be wrapping up the review, of course, with the star formation being projected out of his one eye socket, benefited by the fact that this figure does have at least two swappable head sculpts. The only thing about the figure, though, is that the color scheme, the color scheme, when it comes to his arms, when it comes to his legs, and when it even comes to his head, I think it's actually darker here in the plastic that they've gone with than it actually is in the cartoon. In more of the cartoon, Monstar, at least in his armored body, comes across more like he's all orange. For one reason or another, they decided to go with a burgundy plastic. Maybe, I guess, just to kind of break up a little bit of the color scheme, but I would have rather, I think, different shades of orange instead of going straight out 
like a color of red. Other than that, though, it's a great looking figure, though. And again, I can only hope that we are going to be getting the rest of, I would imagine it be the case, we are going to be getting the rest of Monstars minions that we will be, of course, getting in some future waves. Speaking of which, though, we are going to be also getting, I think, Buzzsaw. Buzzsaw makes up the first wave of Silverhawks figures. Now, of course, we will be looking at him and we will be looking at also Steelheart in upcoming videos. If you guys are interested to check out those those videos and you haven't already had the chance, could I just maybe just recommend throwing it out there? If you guys are interested, you can catch it if you want. If you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. If you haven't also had the chance to turn on that bell notification, it's not just something I say. It also benefits you. There was actually, in fact, a couple of channels that I wondered for a while I was subscribed to. How... How come I didn't know that they were putting out videos? Turned out, I didn't have the bell notification turned on. And sure enough, they had posted a couple of videos. At the time of shooting this, they had posted about four days ago. So I know that from speaking firsthand, that the bell notification is there. It is there to obviously help you guys to get those reminders every single time new videos are posting. Now, we are have already looked at Quil Quicksilver. Yes, we've looked at now Armored Monstar. We are going to be looking at still Buzzsaw and still Steelheart. I'm just not really sure which order I'm going to be doing it. So far, I've got done good guy, bad guy. I guess by that order, my daughter, who's six years old, would already know the next one in order would be a good person and then a bad person, dad. So I'm probably going to be looking, I'm guessing, at Steelheart then next. We're going to probably be wrapping up the rest of this wave, looking at Buzzsaw, Buzzsaw last. Still lots of stuff coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.